In this lesson, we want to talk about how to determine if two functions are inverses. So in the last lesson, we learned how to find the inverse of a one-to-one -one function. Basically, we swap the x and y values, okay, and then we just solve for y. And then we use our special notation f inverse of x. That's all there is to it, really. So in this kind of section here, what I want to do is show you how to determine if two functions are inverses. So they give you two functions, one f, one g in most cases, and they say, hey, determine if these two are inverses. So the rule for this is very, very simple. If they're inverses, then f of g of x is equal to x. So this is f composed with g. We already saw this earlier in the course. And then also, we'll say and here, g of f of x is equal to x as well. So both of these conditions have to be met. Don't just check one, you have to check both. So if we have f of g of x, so f of g of x, what is this equal to? Well, again, we already know how to do this. We take f of x, which is 2x minus 9, and everywhere there's an x, there's one right there, we're going to plug in g of x. So g of x is this guy right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug this in for x there. I'm just going to simplify. So I would have 2, this guy right here, times x, plug this in for x, so times x plus 9 over 2, and then I'm subtracting away 9. So what does this give me? Let me scroll down. Well, we know that 2 over 2 is 1, so that's gone. And we basically have what? You'd have this numerator here of x plus 9, and then minus 9. And this equals what? 9 minus 9 is 0, so this is just x. So in the first case, it's true, right? We have f of g of x is x. So let me erase everything, and let's just put a check mark here. And now let's do g of f of x. So g of f of x. And what's this going to be equal to? We'll take g of x, and everywhere there's an x, there's just 1. We're going to plug in f of x. So again, this gets plugged in right there. That's all we're doing. So you'd have 2x minus 9, okay, that's for x there, then plus 9. Then over, your denominator is going to be 2. So let me scroll down, so we have some room to work. And what do we have first? We have minus 9 plus 9, so you can basically say this is plus negative 9. So negative 9 plus 9 is 0. You can basically cancel those out and say this is 2x over 2, which is just x, right? This cancels. So we've proved the other condition, and let me erase this also. And I'll just put another check mark here. So f of g of x is equal to x, and g of f of x is equal to x. So if both of those are true, they're inverses. So if you wanted to, you could really kind of scratch this out and say this is f inverse of x like this. If you wanted to, I'm just going to leave it as g of x for now. But you might also see this notation as f of f inverse of x. So in some textbooks, they'll do that and say this has to be equal to x. And then also the and, okay, the and here would be f inverse of f of x would be equal to x. So again, both of these have to be true. So you might see it this way or the other way. All right, so let's erase this and let me show you why this kind of works out. To get a good intuition into this, because this is generic notation, let's just pick a point that works here. So let's just say f of 2. f of 2 is equal to what? You'd have 2 times 2, which is 4, minus 9, which is negative 5. So an ordered pair here that works is 2 comma negative 5. So 2 comma negative 5. Again, with the inverse, those are going to be flipped. So the y value becomes the x value, the x value becomes the y value. So it should be true that an ordered pair that satisfies g of x would be negative 5 comma 2. Well, let's see if that's the case. So g of negative 5 is equal to what? Well, you'd plug in a negative 5 here and then plus 9, that's 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So these two are kind of the reverse of each other. The x value became the y value, and the y value became the x value. Now, let's think about this a little bit more deeply. If I think about, let's just take the first scenario, f of g of negative 5, okay? What is g of negative 5? g of negative 5 is the y value that you get when you plug in a negative 5 in for x in g of x, okay? So we already know that if I plug in a negative 5 here, I get a 2, okay? So what's going to happen is what? This turns out to be f of 2, because this, this right here, g of negative 5, we already know, that's a 2. So now I have f of 2, and I want to say, what is f of 2? Well, I go back up here, I know this is negative 5. 
So f of g of negative 5, I can just erase this, is negative 5. Okay, and you can play around with this a little bit more, but basically that's all we're saying. f of g of x is equal to x for any x in that domain. And then g of f of x is equal to x, again, for any x in the domain. So again, just play around with this for a little while, and this will start to make some sense for you. Again, when you work with generic notation, a lot of times it's confusing. Okay, let's go ahead and jump in and look at another one. So we have f of x equals the cube root of x minus 3, and g of x equals the quantity x plus 3 cubed. So are they inverses? So let's check f of g of x first and see what we get. So this is my f of x. I'm going to plug this in here for x. So again, this whole thing gets plugged in there. So you would have the cube root of the quantity x plus 3 cubed. And then you'd be subtracting away 3 out here. So what does this give me? Let me scroll down and get some room. We know that this kind of index would cancel with this exponent here, and I'd just be left with this x plus 3. So I would have x plus 3 minus 3, which is just equal to x. So the first condition is true, f of g of x is x. So what about g of f of x? So g of f of x is equal to 1. So let's scroll back up. And again, I'm starting with g of x, and I'm just going to plug in for x there, and this is what I'm going to plug in. So... I would have inside the parentheses this cube root of x minus 3, and then you'd have plus 3, and the whole thing is cubed, okay? So what do we have here? Well, we have this minus 3 plus 3. That can be done. So minus 3 plus 3 is obviously 0. So I can say this is the cube root of x, and then this is cubed. Again, this is going to cancel with this, and I'm just left with x. So in both cases, the f of g of x is x, and g of f of x is x. So because both of those conditions were met, we can say these guys are inverses. All right, let's take a look at another one. So now we have f of x equals, we have 2 over x minus 1 and then minus 3. And we have g of x equals, we have negative 3 over x minus 1 and then minus 2. So again, I'm just going to start with f of g of x. Okay, this equals what? Well, I'll have 2 over, where I have an x here, i got to plug this whole thing in. So be really careful with this. So I'm going to do negative 3 over x minus 1 and then minus 2. So this whole thing right here got plugged in right there. Okay, you see that. So if I just kind of x this out now, what's left? Well, I have minus 1. Okay, that's got to be done. And again, that's in the denominator down here. And then outside of this, I've got minus 3. So this one's really, really easy to make a mistake on. So be very, very careful when you're plugging stuff in. So let's scroll down so we have a lot of room to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is do negative 2 minus 1. And I'm just going to do that in line and say this is minus 3. And now I would need a common denominator here. So I would multiply this. And before I do this, let me put plus negative 3 so I don't make a silly sign mistake. So I'm going to multiply this by the quantity x minus 1. And this is all kind of running over over the quantity x minus 1, okay? So let me fix this real quick so it doesn't run over here and get confusing. This is going to be negative 3x plus 3. So negative 3x, negative 3x plus 3. And you're going to have a common denominator, so you can just get rid of this, and you can just kind of extend this over. We'll say this is x minus 1 here. Now, before we deal with anything over here, realize that you have a complex fraction here. So really what I can say is that I have 2 over 1, divided by, and if I simplify this, negative 3 plus 3, those are going to cancel, okay? So what I'd have is 2 over 1 divided by negative 3x over x minus 1. So this equals what? 2 over 1 times the reciprocal of this, which is x minus 1 over negative 3x. Okay, so now that we know that, let's go ahead and multiply 2 times x, that's 2x, and then 2 times negative 1 is minus 2, and this is over negative 3x. So this is over negative 3x. Now, I have this minus 3 over here that I have to deal with. I want to get a common denominator going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by negative 3x over negative 3x. And again, to not make a sign mistake, I'm going to put plus negative here. Really easy to make a sign mistake and blow the whole thing. So I'm going to say that this is equal to 2x minus 2. And then you have negative 3 times negative 3 times x. So this will be plus 9x, and then this is all over the common denominator of negative 3x. So what does this give me? 
2x plus 9x is 11x, and then you have minus 2, and this is over negative 3x. So obviously this is not equal to x, so you can say these two are not inverses of each other. You don't have to go back and check g of f of x. If one of them fails, they're not inverses.